Welcome back. Hope you're all doing well. Hope your trucks are running good. <clears throat> I wanted to put into perspective what I did the last couple of weeks. And because when you're out there, I, I know I've been there years ago when I was thinking about doing this, getting on YouTube and trying to figure out, you know, trying to weed between the people saying they're making $10,000 a week, people trying to sell me stuff and find the real, the real numbers. Um, so, you know, it would affirm what I kind of already knew. And that's what I want to kind of do, because I think all of you have a pretty good idea of in, in your head what this is really all about. But let's uh, let's go over the numbers just for the last 10 days, because um, I think that most people would be able to, um, you know, if you're coming from a regular job and you moved over to doing this, you could probably work 10 days out of the month and pay your bills. So let's just go over this and get some real numbers um, down to the bone. So 10 days out. Um, wasn't able to get a uh, reset at home. So this was 10 days, 10 full days away from home. Um, not my normal MO, but uh, we're in different times here. So 4,375 miles. That was, that's an estimation. I didn't write them down like I should have. And it may be a little bit more than that, or maybe a little bit less, I'm not sure. But here's how it all broke down. I left Texas, I went to New York, and I took two parcels up there, made $3,300. I also got a truck order not used uh, for one that I picked up and had to, they had to turn around and take it back off the truck. So from New York, I jumped over to Massachusetts, got two pallets that were within 75 miles of each other. Two parcels going to two different places, and that paid two thousand twenty-five bucks. And then coming back, I found um, one from Indiana straight back to the house, paid me a thousand dollars. And uh, so, if I did all my math right, I made a dollar forty-four a mile. And again, like I said in my last videos, if you're coming from driving a big truck and you see that number, um, you probably gagging. It just, it takes a long time. It still hasn't set right in my head that that $1.44 a mile is going to make me any money, but it is. Um, and here's one of the big reasons why. I used 312 gallons of gas, gas. And um, when I left Texas, gas was just over $3 a gallon. When I got up to closer to the Northeast, it was just over $4 a gallon. So I used three fifty kind of as a, an average. And so I paid a little bit under $1,100 for fuel for 10 days driving. And here's another big thing about having the small truck. My, erase this. My insurance for the entire month, the entire month is $600. $600. Um, so, Let's just go over the numbers real quick and I'll tell you about how I got all these loads um, and what it was all about. So I made $6,325 gross. If you subtract the fuel and go ahead and pay the insurance for the entire month, uh, come out to $4,632 net. Now all of that could go in my pocket, um, but you know you got to save, you got to put some money aside for maintenance, and it just depends on what type of truck you have, diesel, if you how many tires you have on that thing, and what's going wrong with it. All those good things match together, but this can certainly most of it can go into my pocket. Um, a fuel, uh, if I change the oil in the truck and get somebody else to do it on this one, it cost me forty bucks. Um, so. You know, in the big truck, I could definitely make $6,300 gross in one week. Well, I wouldn't say definitely. Um, if I was over the road, it, it might be possible. Right now, things are pretty bad. But my net definitely wouldn't be $4,600. So you see, it just with all the, the different factors, the big truck, you're paying more in fuel. You're paying a whole lot more in maintenance. You're paying more in insurance. So at the end of the day, when it all dwindles down, the profit is not that much different. Uh, different. And um, 
So, all right, let's talk about the difference in the profit from this uh, cargo van to a big truck. And I'm going to do a standalone video about this, but I thought I'd touch on it real quick uh, because I ran the numbers real quick. And it's very difficult to compare apples to apples when you're talking about these things because so much is different. Um, but just to give you a, a generalized view of the difference in profit, if you're going to try to run like I do, I, I don't run that hard. And, um, you know, having a brand new big truck with a brand new big truck payment would make absolutely no sense for me. I would never make it. Um, I couldn't do what I'm doing. And I, that's kind of what I want to compare right here. Just the, the little things that go along with it. If you're only going to run half the month like I do most of the time, or just a few weeks and take off, you might be better off with a cargo van. and uh, Far less stressful, um, but uh, let's just go over the numbers real quick just to compare um, some, some little details here. So I made $6,300 over the course of 10 days in the cargo van. I could have done better than that if I really would have uh, hustled, made more calls, and uh, I guess I could have done worse. But um, this is a fairly uh, stress-free 10 days. So it come out to be about $1.44 a mile. I paid $1,100 in fuel. And if I paid my entire insurance for the month, that would be $600. I went ahead and yesterday I went down and just got a whole new set of tires for this thing. And I got the insurance for each tire um, to go along with it. If it blows out, I can take it just about anywhere and get a new tire. And so with all that, it was just over a thousand bucks for six brand new tires. Okay. If I take it somewhere and get an oil change here in my hometown, there's a place I take mine. It costs 40 bucks to get an oil change for a semi-synthetic if I take it there. So that was in 10 days. So my net for those 10 days was 3,585 bucks. Again, that's not counting taxes, load boards, tags, all the little things that go with if you have a truck payment, what have you. Um, so let's jump over to the big truck. And what I did basically, um, what the heck that is. was I stayed with the exact same amount of miles, but I doubled the rate per mile. Now I was doing power only, and a lot of power only, they wanna offer you $2 a mile. Um, now if you settle for that, you're, you're gonna be making below average, but I would say right now, 288 a mile is, is a fair uh, rate uh, for what people are getting. Um, I know some people are getting a lot more. It just depends on what area you're in and what you're doing, but that's power only. So if you have a truck that's getting decent fuel mileage, I use seven miles per gallon. Some people are getting way less. Some people are getting a little more. Uh, I, use, I would use $3,100 in fuel for those miles. If I paid my insurance like I did here for the whole month, I would pay $1,400. My insurance is cheap or was cheap for the big truck. I'm in a decent area where rates are down. My truck wasn't valued very much. It was just an old truck. So my rates were really inexpensive. I had no marks on my record, nothing. Um, so that was for the whole month, just like here. Now, if I got some tires, now $4,000, you can't buy a whole set of tires for a big truck for $4,000. But these tires last a lot longer than these tires. So I kind of prorated it. You know, you might, if you blow out one steer tire and you're getting a decent steer tire, you're going to be paying 700 to a thousand bucks, especially if you get some roadside service. So $4,000 I thought was a fair uh, number to put there. Um, but if you did buy a whole set, you're looking at a whole lot more money than that. Probably double that if you get decent tires. An oil change, $400. I really don't remember how much oil change costs. I did them all myself, but I'm going to say $400. So at the end of the day, you've run the exact same amount of miles. You've made double the money in your, your, your big truck. What is the difference in profit? This one, you would net $3,675. You grossed $12,000 there, but the profit is about $100 difference. And I know I'm going to have lots of people saying, well, you didn't say about this, you didn't talk about that. But at the end of the day, at the end of the month, at the end of the year, 
this one is the tags on it are going to cost you 10 times as much. Um, you know, I pay a, what it was at 100. I can't remember what tags were, but this one's $1,400 for tags. You've got permits, you've got heavy duty usage tax, you've got um, heavy duty permits you got to buy in New Mexico, Kentucky. You've got um, just all kinds of little things that eat you up with this big truck that just never, ever stop. Uh, if you have a breakdown and that thing goes in the garage, any little thing, it's going to be a $2,000 bill if you can't fix those things yourself. If you have an APU, those things are always going down. So, you know, it's just, it's not apples to apples. I understand that. But for comparative purposes, um, you can see that in, if you're doing short term, if you're doing, I wouldn't call it short term. If you're trying to do what I'm doing, I don't work every day. I don't try, I'm not a road warrior. I try to take almost half of the month off if I can. Uh, that's my balance between work and being at home. Uh, this past month has been a little bit more difficult switching over to the van and trying to find those the right loads. But you can see if you're trying to do it the way I'm doing it and balance home and work, that it makes no sense for me to go out and get a brand new truck with a brand new truck payment. I would never make it. I'd have to be a road warrior. If you have, you have a big truck, you've got a bigger payment. Um, you got bigger insurance, you got bigger fuel, you got bigger maintenance, bigger permits, all those things that go along with it. Now, people who are short sighted, you know, they, they get on YouTube and they say, oh, I made this much money. And, um, and on my videos, I never put in there how much maintenance was costing me. Um, uh, you know, a lot of the little things, uh, maybe I should have. But everybody's truck is a little different. You have some guys claiming they haven't touched their truck in a year and it's perfect and nothing's wrong with it. And then some people, they can't get their truck out of the shop. But you can expect to, you know, spend $20,000 a year easy on the maintenance of a big truck um, when, you, when you actually add in all the real cost. So at the end of the day, if you're not a road warrior and you're trying to, you know, balance home life and work life, the difference in profit is not going to be that much difference. When I park this truck, it doesn't cost me as much as parking this truck, um, if that makes sense. The bills still, still keep coming on both of them, but this truck, the bills, when I'm not working, are a heck of a lot easier to pay than these bills. Hopefully, that makes sense, and, and uh, there's some good information there for somebody. All right, let's talk about how uh, you have to go about this in the cargo van. When I was doing it in the big truck, it was you know kind of one load at a time, but I was always on the load board looking for that next load. Um, you know, depending on you know if I didn't book a load that was going to take me all week, which I didn't do very often. Uh, I was at home a lot in the big truck, but it, it's when you get on those load boards. Um, it's an all day job, not just when you're uh, working, but when you're off of work, when I'm at home here, um, even when I'm watching TV, I'm refreshing that load board. When I go out to eat, I'm looking at a load board. When I, at the end of the day, I'll look at the load board up until about six o'clock, 6 p.m. Um, it never, ever stops. It's one of the things that when you watch these other YouTube guys and they say, hey, I made $10 a mile. What you're not seeing and what they're not showing you um, because they're just trying to get clicks on their video is that they spent two days trying to get that $10 a mile load and it takes them three hours to get loaded. You know, they drive wherever, it takes them three hours to get unloaded and then they have to deadhead 500 miles back to where they started from. And at the end of the week, if they would have just taken that good rate to begin with that first day, uh, they could have probably worked a lot less and had the, you know, they wouldn't have been stressing out as much. But uh, it's it's just refreshing that load board all day. Thumb gets tired. When I'm driving down the road, I have my, my phone mounted right there where I don't have to take my eyes off the road. I'll refresh that load board, look over if there's something different or something I want to take. I'll pull over and make a call or make an, shoot an email, um, but it's just, it's a never ending process until you start getting some contacts set up. Now, after a while, when I had the big truck, 
I did have several people who would call me, hey, I got this load again, do you want it? I had one account what was kind of a dedicated thing where when it started running, I had a load every single day that paid a decent rate close to home. It's just one of those things where you work yourself, you know, you take that load, you're extremely nice to that agent, you get it done, get everything perfect, let them know when you're there, let them know when you leave. And you're just trying to make those contacts, those, you know, so that when that load comes up again, they say, hey, that guy did it last time, he did a great job. Um, and I still get calls on those uh, to this day for different things. But um, in this game, it's also all about partials. And that's where the hustle comes in and knowing your game. Um, knowing what you can fit in that truck. Knowing how to fit things in that truck. And especially because, you know, I'm putting in the categories, I'm putting hot shot, moving van, uh, straight truck, um, what else? I'm just putting a whole lot of different categories in there. And what I end up having to do when I call on these, you know, I have my parameters in there. I can only take 4,200 pounds. It has to be less than 16 feet. So there's a lot of times where there's a load that has one pallet that's four feet by four feet by four feet that'll fit in my, my van. But it's listed under a hot shot. And I'll call them, they say, no, we need a, a hot shot. Why? They're going to load it on there with a with a forklift, right? They can load that on mine. Um, and I don't need, and they'll be calling for a tarp on this one too. I won't need to tarp it. But it's about talking those people into those things. Some of these people are like, nope, they want this. That's what they're getting. Um, if they want a moving van, that's what they get. Yours not a moving van or, you know, what have you. It's about talking those people into that being, I'm, I'm as courteous as I can possibly be because you don't know. You might be talking to those people, they say no, and then 10 minutes later, they put out another load on the load board that you can take from them. So um, that's part of the hustle to it, um, talking people into putting those loads on your truck if you've got a, a van like mine. And then um, getting partials. You know, is it worth filling up half your van for a dollar a mile or getting that one pallet that's only... 75 cents a mile um and then maybe you know you'd have you know as much much more space to get that next load in there it's just it's just one of those things you just have to kind of feel your way as you go um how these partials work sometimes these partials are 10 feet long and they're just a, i had one the other day that was 14 feet long and it was a box this wide i mean it was nothing they listed it as needing 14 feet of truck space um, but it's just a, a un, unending series of decisions you have to make. And over time, they get easier at any one time. I've got like four or five things going on in my head. You know, if this doesn't work, I'm going to pivot and go this way. I've got these two things, you know, just, just a whole lot of decisions you have to make. They get easier over time as does learning anything. The, one of the other real important things is good lanes. Now this week I went up to the Northeast. Uh, I was originally going to go to California where, you know, I'm always studying those load boards in different areas. LA just looks like a great market where you can get several parcels coming back East. Um, and I was going to do that. I was going to try to get a couple parcels going that way and then a couple coming back. It didn't work out. So I ended up going to the Northeast. Northeast is a very good area. Um, now down in Texas, if you if you fill out all these categories, different little things that you want to pick up, and you have hot shot as one of them, ninety percent of what's going to pop up is going to be flatbed hot shot loads, and you might have ten hot shot loads and one for a straight truck, no cargo van, no expedited van, <laughs> nothing. Um, but you go up to the northeast, you're probably going to have just as many cargo van loads as you do hot shot loads. At least that's what I saw when I went up there this time. And so I had a lot more choices. And if I wanted to stay up there and just go back and forth for, you know, a week or two, I can make some really good money. But, on you know, on top of that, you got your tolls when you go up there. It's hard to get around up there uh, with any efficiency without taking a toll road. And you've got higher fuel prices. So, I mean, yes, the loads are easier to find up there. You can make more money. But remember, you're going to be, you know, a lot of out-of-pocket stuff. So, just finding that good lane uh, in maybe a dedicated lane 
And that comes with doing a, you know, in my experience, that comes with treating people with respect. When you talk to these agents on the phone, they may be short with me. They may be having a bad day that, you know, they may just be a big butthole. I don't care. I'm treating them like they're the greatest person on the face of the earth because 10 minutes later, like I said, that load you called on, they give it to somebody else 10 minutes later, they've got another one that uh, you want to call on. If you were a butthole to them 10 minutes ago, you know, you never know how that happens. But I've gotten these runs that uh, repeat themselves over and over quite a bit because, you know, they say I always email them when I pick up, when I'm going to my ETA, you know, all the when I get there, when I get unloaded, let them know everything that's going on. Send them that BOL as soon as I'm done. And it makes a real good impression. People that know their stuff, if they have somebody that's done a good job for them, you know, and they're impressed, that's going to be in their mind. Next time that load comes up, they're going to email you. That's happened to me so many times. And what's happened to me is on these, um, when I'm negotiating, I, I put out a video on that a, a long time ago, but um, I always have these guys, you know, they get on there whether they're super truckers or they're people that actually want to, you know, help me out. They always say, oh, you need a dispatcher. You, get, they, you can make some serious money with a dispatcher. you got to have a dispatcher. Dispatcher's great. And I'm going to call BS on all that because the guys that told me that haven't really watched all my videos. They've watched a, you know, a five-minute piece of one video, and they have no idea what I'm about. Um, yeah, if you run 360 days a year and you're out there to make all the money you can and you don't care about being home, by all means, go get your dispatcher. I want to negotiate my rates so at the end of the day, I know um, I have a fairly good idea of whether I got all the money I could out of that or I just had to settle for what I could get. And I went where I wanted to go, when I wanted to go. Um, it, when you when you get a dispatcher, you're sort of turning all that over to somebody else. All those decisions uh, that you can make yourself, you're paying somebody to make those decisions for you. And think about what I just said. I'm one truck. I spend all day, every day, refreshing that load board, looking for loads, uh, emailing, calling. Dispatchers are going to have multiple trucks. That's the name of the game for dispatchers. Sign on as many trucks you can. Keep those wheels rolling. If you've got 30 trucks, and I imagine some dispatchers have quite a few more than that, but imagine 30 trucks, 30 cargo vans on top of that, not just trucks. If you have a few cargo vans and you're trying to get multiple par partials for each one of those, how could they possibly have time to sit there and negotiate the best possible rate on each one of those? And on top of that, get you, you know, some of these uh, guys saying, well, yeah, I could tell them what rate I want and where I want to go. Well, if you're going to do that, then um, seems like somebody's at the driveway. Then why not just make all those decisions yourself? Why have pay somebody, you know, 10 to 15% and then they're calling you every 10 minutes. Uh, you want to take this load you're going over here. You want to take this load going over here for this much. You want to settle. I don't want to do that. I'm going to take all that stress away. And just do this myself. You learn so much by doing all this yourself. And you go where you want to go, when you want to go, and you don't pay somebody um, to take those decisions away from you. That's just not why I got my own authority and doing my own thing. I don't want somebody else to make those decisions for me. Um, but back to the subject at hand. Um, you know, I'm negotiating. Um a lot of times, you know, we just can't see eye to eye because I, I highball a lot of these depending on if I really need them or if they just happen to be going in the same direction or if I just need some work. It, you know, a lot of things go into that decision making. So at the end of the day, I'm negotiating with these people and, I, you know, I'm saying $1,500, they are saying $1,200 and we're kind of stuck at an, at an impasse. You know, I'll just say, hey, I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much hang up the phone. I can't tell you how many times, two minutes later, that phone will ring and they'll say, okay, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and do that rate. Or, you know, the next load, they just remember, they, just like you and me, they're going to remember somebody that treated them like a human being. So, um, yeah, no dispatchers for me. If you, if you want a dispatcher, 
that's fine. Um, I believe you're going to have a very difficult time trying to find a dispatcher for a cargo van who's going to get you legitimate loads and get you where you want to go. Now, if you're not worried about where you want to go and how much you're making, um, yeah, by all means. But I think you're going to really have a, a hard time finding a, a dispatcher for cargo van loads. But, um, yeah, that's it. The good lanes. You got to, you know, it's, it's very difficult right now, especially right now. When load counts are down, rates are down, and fuel is up, you know, I would, um, you know, my my strategy is, is real easy. I like going where I like to go, when I like to go. I'm not in it to, you know, find those perfect lanes. <sighs> um, there were times when I knew I could not, was not going to be able to get a good load coming out of Denver. But I got a very good rate going up there, so I was willing to deadhead five, six, seven hundred miles out of Denver to find another load. It just depends on what you're willing to do and what you want to do if you're like me. Um, I Lots of times I would head out west with a very good paying load, knowing that I probably wasn't going gonna, wasn't gonna to get anything decent at all coming back. But I love driving that way, and uh, it just was something I wanted to do. I'm better right now. So if you're in it specifically to make your maximum amount of dollars, <clears throat> you have no time frame to be home, maybe you don't have family, um, and you just want to get out there, jump on it. I, I knew a guy back when I first started driving that was from Jamaica. And I, I don't know, I'm not sure how he was swinging this, but he would come to the States and drive for six months, nonstop, as much as he possibly could, make that money and then go back home to Jamaica for six months and he, he would, you know, be doing little jobs or whatever there. But if you're doing something like that, then, you know, you definitely want to get in the best paying lanes and that's always on east of the Mississippi somewhere. But you just keep in mind too, fuel and tolls go up in those lanes. But um, um, that's it. You know, it's just, it's a hustle, hustle, hustle when you're out there. If you're trying to make that big money, freshen those load boards all the time, trying to make good contacts. Getting as many parcels as you can on that truck, understanding how everything fits in there, um, and knowing that sometimes they overestimate the weight, sometimes they underestimate, um, and you know sometimes they say you know it, this pallet is you know four feet wide when you show up, it's a box, so uh, it's just it's just an endless hustle, and it's rewarding. At the end of the day, it's very rewarding when you get that second, third partial on there, and, and you start you know counting that money, but. Um, there you go.